Hello friends, my name is RagePanda1 and today I am going to teach you how to swat the bug that we all hate so much. And it's actually a lot simpler than you think, especially with a lot of the stuff they've been releasing lately, because Goat Games obviously regrets the mistake that they made with the male water and sun, and they're trying to remedy that as soon as they possibly can. Unfortunately, if you're one of the long-term players of the game, this is going to mean probably a huge investment for you, probably some things that I've been saying for a while that you have have not wanted to do but if you did them you'd be at the top and spoiler alert the answer is not using the draggy sprite the draggy sprite is not very good it's not that effective and the thing that makes male water and sun really good is the amount of healing he puts out not necessarily the damage so trying to counter the damage doesn't help that much and the investment that it takes to get it to the level that it would matter at all is way too high and it's going to cost your team a lot by not having other sprites in those positions of course, Bulko is still good. Bulko's good against anybody. He's not specifically good against Mineral Water and Sun any more than he is anybody else. So that's my quick spiel about sprites in terms of countering the Mineral Water and Sun. Now I do think that starting with the male Lacuna is a good place to start because it lets me talk about a lot of different things that work very well against this character. But before I do that, I do want to mention the number one counter that exists in the game, and that is to just be stronger. If you are just simply stronger, it almost doesn't matter what the enemy team has. In fact, there's always a break point where if you are stronger, you win. It doesn't matter if you made a good comp or not, you just have better stats and you are going to win. So. If you're having a hard time winning, then the first thing that you should look into is raising your vigor levels, making your runes stronger in all of your gear, making sure all of your gear is absolutely max level, and making sure that your team is max level with all the books that you can get. You're not going to be able to get to that point tomorrow, but every little bit that you add on is going to help, and it's going to help you win. It's just the sad truth about the game. Power is how you win. When I talk about things being better or countering, I'm talking about that working at an even playing field and maybe allowing you to punch up a little bit. Of course, depending on team comps, you can kill somebody who's double your might, but that requires you to be lucky. It requires the enemy to have some people on their team that you have hard counters for, and it requires a lot of other things in that direction. So enough about that, why am I talking about the male Acuna yet again? You're probably sick of hearing it by now. Well, the reason is because there are a few things that are going to counter the male water and sun, which you really should have on every single team. And I'm not kidding, you should have these things as a focus on every single team. If you don't, then you're relying on your big power to win. Number one, area of effect crowd control, and a lot of it. I don't mean one person, I mean a lot of it. At least three people that are doing area of effect crowd control need to be on your team if you want to be able to counter people who are just simply stronger than you are. Aside from that, you also need to have a lot of anti-heal. I do not mean one person. Some people think that when I say they need some anti-heal, they put one trait on one character, or they have one character that does a little bit of anti-heal and they think that's going to work just fine. That is not enough. You need strong area of effect anti-heal that is going to do more than 80% anti-heal. So why are we looking at our male Akuna then? Well, to start off with, we've got his trait Harsh Rhyme that comes with his clan. This has a 21% chance of preventing recovery of constitution within the next three seconds. That is 100% anti-heal. It's just a chance to be able to do it. It's not always going to be up on your target, but it is a huge help. And the thing that people don't realize is when you're in these battles with these strong healing teams, it's not always male, water, and sun, but he's the best example that I can give you right now. You're going to get to a point in the game where you almost kill somebody. And if that ultimate is ticking and it's healing and they happen to get healed up from being at 10% health, you may have just lost the match based on that alone. So if this had activated and he didn't get healed up from 10% and you landed one more ability on him, then he's a corpse now. Start digging a hole. There's a corpse on the battlefield. When that happens, 20% of their team is gone, you're at a huge advantage now, and hopefully your healing will have kicked in and saved all of your people because the enemy wasn't running anti-heal. Not enough people are doing it. But you need it to be more reliable than this. This is just a really nice bonus, and the fact that it's 100% cancellation is huge. So on top of that, with his active skill, he creates his icy zone in the current enemy target's direction, which we all know is huge, and it covers probably two-thirds of the battlefield in most cases, at least the parts that are being used. Enemies within this zone take a certain amount of damage per second, and their healing effect that they receive is 
reduced by 60%. He's already, almost the entire match, running 60% anti-heal that is going to hit 60% or more of the team, depending on how you are placing everything that you're placing. That negates the biggest effect of the male water and sun. His biggest problem is that he is healing the team so well. It's not that he's doing so much damage. His damage is really nice. But that's not what the problem is. The problem is that he is auto-healing everybody to full health after everything that you try to do. And you must stop that to be able to get some kills in order so that you can progress and actually kill the male water and sun. Well then, why else am I still talking about this guy? He's already got multiple forms, anti-heal that are super strong. What else could we possibly want? Oh, that's right, huge AoE crowd control. Why do I keep saying AoE crowd control when I'm talking about trying to counter one person? The reason is because the male water and sun is not one person. He is his entire team. His entire team is going to be casting abilities throughout the battle. Those are going to be powering up his energy. A lot of people think that if you just use energy reduction, then you're going to be doing just fine and you won't have to worry about it. And that is a losing battle. That is like eating whatever you want to eat. 40,000 calories a day and just assuming that you're going to walk it off. You are not going to walk it off. You cannot out energy drain this person who is an entire team giving him energy. You can't do it. It might help at crucial moments. It might be nice if it's on a character that you like to use. It is not the way that you attempt to counter this character. It doesn't hurt, but it is not the main goal. So the reason we want AoE crowd control is so that we can stop the rest of his team and the male water and sun himself from giving the male water and sun energy. On top of that, we need to crowd control this man so that he stops ulting. If he doesn't stop ulting, then he gets an extra two seconds stun on everybody who takes enough procs. So even if all you do is stun him out of doing it just in time to save your own team from being stunned, then you have countered him very effectively. If you have nothing on your team or very little things on your team that are running that crowd control, then you can forget about it. He's going to run a train all over you and you're not going to be able to do it anything about it. That's why the most important things here are anti-heal and AoE crowd control. So we're going to talk about a few ways that you can get that job done. Another small note, just real quick, the ultimate on this character requires for the stun that the enemy is casting their active skill. If the male water and sun is already doing his ultimate, and the only person you have doing your area of effect crowd control is the male Akuna, unless his active skill gets a stun and restarts the ultimate, there's no chance that the male water and sun is going to do his active skill so it's really nice to have that he's got more than one AoE crowd control because that's going to help, but it's not perfect and he needs more on the team. There are no characters that are a one-man auto counter to the male water and sun. You need more. And if you're playing on high level servers, you know everybody's running the guy anyway, you may as well do something about it. First up, anti-heal. And people are going to absolutely gut me like a fish if I don't mention the male soul keeper. Why do we care about the male soul keeper? You may be asking yourself. The reason is because this guy has a 100% anti-heal that he can keep up for a large portion of the match on most of the enemy team. When his agonizing mist is up. Any characters that are stuck in that mist cannot regenerate constitution. This is pretty huge and it's part of the reason why this guy is so powerful. One note that I want to make about this character, this isn't a video about him, but I just want to mention the male soul keeper is very, very strong and he appears to do crazy stuff, but he does that more when you are punching down on people rather than when you're trying to attack people who are higher level than you are. He can still be effective, but he is not a tool to be used to try to kill teams that are much, much stronger than you. It's just the balance of how his abilities go. You're looking to get the executes. If they have so much extra strength and defense, and by comparison your strength isn't very high, then you're going to be causing yourself a problem and it's going to be hard for you to get into the phase where you're executing. Whereas if you're attacking teams who are not nearly as strong as you, you're almost executing them after a single basic attack and it gets wild. But that's not the point of the video, I just, uh, I just had to make that comment somewhere. Who knows what I'm going to talk about this guy again. So. 
the point of this character is to get him in close and you want the enemies to all be close together. So if you're going to be using this guy as one of the main ways that you're getting your anti-heal, you must be grouping up the enemies or it is not going to be effective enough. The circle does get bigger when he's in dominance state from his ultimate. That state lasts for 12 seconds and you can basically keep it up the entire time after you get it going. But if you're not pulling in the enemies and you're using this guy as your only anti-heal, you are not doing enough to try to do these counters. All that being said, I know it sounds like I'm talking bad about the guy. He's a very strong character. He is good to have on a team, and he is very good for this purpose. I would be completely remiss if I did not also mention my female Bjorn Krieger. You know how I love her so much. Cold Snap is another great way of putting anti-heal across the entire battlefield, especially if you're using both of the bears. They're taking almost all of the damage, and everybody is putting anti-heal on themselves. That's very strong and very good, and if you're not using Bjorn Kriegers, I would almost consider putting Cold Snap on a character that is standing in the front line especially if you have your other team traits already taken care of. I think that's going to be a great thing to do. Another thing I've noticed, people are seeing their frontliners and just putting one defensive trait. They're not putting energetic and honorable. You don't want to do that. If your character's job is to take the damage for the team, you want energetic and honorable. It's very important. Now, for her ultimate, not only is this going to be great for the male water and sun that's on your team because it's giving him an absolute buttload of power, but it's also going to reduce the enemy's constitution recovery by 40%, it says, for one second. And you're thinking, well, that's just so bad. Except that this ability is going to hit them six times, so it's actually going to stack up to six seconds, and you're going to get a lot of of anti-heal out of it. You're going to be getting that in the ultimate phase and these people are already gonna have cold snap on them so you're looking at over 80% of your heal reduction and they can both work at the same time and when it does work like that, they're not gonna get any healing. You're gonna win the alt battle and you're gonna be having a good time. And the female Esterir is pretty close to being just as good. Her constitution recovery is going to be immediately 80%. It's gonna last for four seconds but it does also reapply. The only downside is that both of these are attached to the ultimate which isn't great that's why i think the female bjorn krieger is better not only is she giving more energy to your male water and sun but she also comes with cold snap for free which is going to be working even if you're suffering from the effects of bulko to be fair though you could put cold snap on the esther rear spawn and have a good time with that as well and her icy talons trait is good for your clan anyway now i don't want to make a list of every single way that you can get rid of healing and that you can reduce enemy healing but i will give a quick honorable mention to obliteration which is the clan trait for the warbringers it's not as good as cold snap it's not something that i want to put on my damage dealers so that i can spread anti-heal around but if i had no other way to do it and all of my slots were full and i'm already 120 vigor deep on my level 700 champions and none of them came with anti-heal for free and i just need somewhere to put it then you better believe that I would be getting that on my team no matter what it cost me because you need anti-heal to win right now. And if you are running a team without any healing, whether you're using male water and sun or not, then you are basically planning to lose. It's not a good strategy. You really need to have healing on every single team that you're running. It's super important. I know that some people think that the exception is to just do the big burst meta, and the next thing we're about to talk about is exactly why that's not going to work, and that's different ways that we can get our area of effect crowd control because when we're doing area of effect crowd control all of your buffs that you're trying to stack to do your big damage are not going to line up properly you're going to have a bad time with it some people are going to miss out on the buffs some people are going to miss their big moves during the buffs it's just not going to work out that great it's better to win the battle of attrition and since we're planning to beat our male water and sun and buff our male water and sun and use some of the best characters in the game we're going to be having a really good time against those people who are doing the one trick pony big burst meta i've already Already mentioned the male Akuna, and I think that he's probably the best version of AoE CC, and it's particularly for trying to counter the male water and sun. He just cannot be beat, in my opinion. You've got the clan trait, you've got the abilities that are doing anti-heal, and you've got two abilities that are AoE crowd control. You can't go wrong, he's also doing healing for your own team. Insane. Did I mention that he does crazy damage? I don't know if I mentioned that. It's kind of important. For crowd control, our male Bjorn Krieger is huge for this, particularly in trying to counter the male water and sun. And why might that be? Well, it's because he comes with Cold Snap, and that's really good. Cold Snap is super strong. Super strong. On top of that, he's going to be absolutely laying waste to the enemy team. Not only is he going to be putting Shiver Stacks out and stunning the entire enemy team, again, 
which keeps them from powering up their male water and sun, which is hugely important. He also can be put directly in front of the male water and sun. He will do his line attack. If the male water and sun happens to be alting at that time, he's gonna get knocked up and he's gonna get knocked out of it, meaning he has to restart or he might try to do his active skill, which the male Akuna can capitalize on and get a free stun yet again on him. So the combination of male Bjorn Krieger and male Akuna is the perfect combination if you were only going to dedicate two slots to dealing with male water and sun as well as buffing your own male water and sun these two characters cannot be beat in combination that's just that's just what i believe of course i also like female thunderlord for buffing your own but we talked about that in another video male askavard can be very disruptive for the same purpose and it's pretty reasonable to put cold snap on this guy so i do think that this is another great way that you could get a lot of the area control that you're looking for especially when you're pulling in all of the enemies and then taunting them i can see why this guy was such a big deal before i came back to the game and i honestly can't wait until i get a chance to acquire the character for myself because it seems extraordinarily strong and I highly recommend using him. A very nice benefit to this character is that he groups up all of the enemies which is going to help out a lot of our other characters that we're using for countering male water and sun. Male soul keeper, female Bjorn Krieger, female Esterir, they're all going to get huge benefits from being run with this character and this is what we're looking for. We're not looking to put one character on our team that's going to do a counter. That's not going to help us at all. We're looking to build an effective team that also counters the guy at the same time. If you're not doing all of that, then you're not doing enough. And I also want to talk about a pair of characters that have sort of fallen by the wayside. People have stopped using them. They don't love them as much anymore, but they are still pretty much just as good as they always were. And that's both of the Samirs. Both of the Samirs. Number one with the male Samir, you're grouping up the enemies by pushing them. It's very disruptive for the enemy team, which is pretty huge. But when you do your ultimate skill, you're going to be targeting a stun onto the character with the most strength. And who do you think people are pumping the most vigor on these days who do you think is holding the best gear and probably has the most strength on the team that's right it's usually going to be the male water and sun i think there might be some exceptions where male akunas are going to start taking that treatment but not only that this guy also has his aura of strength reduction and that not only reduces the damage that the male water and sun is doing which is great but it also reduces the healing that he's doing so that counts as anti-heal in a certain capacity and he could also afford to have cold snap on him if he really needed to. So you could get everything done that you need to get done with this character, and he would be great for your team as well as countering. You just have to keep in mind this guy still needs support, just like always, but we are running a lot of healers these days, so it's not that hard to come by. Now, I don't think that the female Samir is the ultimate best character in the game. She kind of never was. Still, for this purpose, she's incredibly good. Her active skill can be sort of disruptive. She gives herself a nice way to survive when she gets to that dangerous alt phase. And more importantly, she keeps people from doing their ultimate. Like I said before, if we're just trying to cancel energy, we're not going to be able to stop the male water and sun from doing his ultimate. It's never going to be enough. That's not the way to counter the guy but if we can stop him from doing his ultimate whatever way we possibly can that gives us windows to do the damage that we need to the team and get some kills so that we have the advantage and we can secure the win this is one of the surprising characters that you're probably not normally looking at and i don't expect top players to go and build this character and put a bunch of vigor on her but if you're in a server where you're just getting into fighting the male water and sun and you happen to have this banner around maybe you've got this character at 10 stars already they're working Worth putting on your team for helping you do that. And I also want to talk about some of the characters that I see used all the time that people are pairing with. One thing that I want you to remember, when you're looking at high level accounts, people are always showing me Kitty's teams. And, you know, I think that Kitty's very good at the game. I think that she understands what she's doing and what the game entails and requires. But when you're looking at her teams, you also need to remember how very expensive it is to make a new character all the way at max level especially if you need more than one for multiple teams, and especially when you need to consider that you have to have high vigor. It is absolutely mandatory. There's nothing else you can do. That's part of the reason that she is still using stuff like the female Ho, in my opinion. Now, maybe she just absolutely loves this character and can't get enough. This character is okay for doing the counter that we're trying to do, but she ain't great. And you're gonna think that she's great just by reading everything that she does. She's not 
great. For one thing, on her active skill, when you're trying to cast a silencing charm on the enemy with the highest energy, the male water and sun is not going to be that very often, and the reason is because he's constantly ulting, which means he's constantly draining his energy. He's always getting a little bit back, but he's also constantly draining his energy. So that's not a reliable way to get an interrupt off on his ultimate, and if you could count on it for interrupting his ultimate for six seconds, then yeah, it would be huge. But it's not going to be that reliable. It'll be nice when it happens, and that's the best you can hope for. What you could hope for is for the paralysis charm to hit the enemy with the highest strength, and then they won't be able to attack for three seconds, which is okay. It's okay, but it's not absolutely amazing. It does do a little bit of damage, but the thing that people are thinking is extra good, which I don't think is extra good, is her ultimate. I think that's why most people are using her. I don't think the active skill is the main goal here. The reason that people like this is because it smooths out the damage and everybody is trying to run female Selfos, female Lionstone, female Ho, and then one burst damage guy and hope for the best. Personally, I find those teams extraordinarily easy to beat. I don't find them to be challenging at all. But also, when you're getting consistent damage coming in for an extended period of time, we're not talking about mitigating burst damage here. We're talking about mitigating an ultimate that never stops. When I play my character, my male and water and son, when he starts ulting, he does not stop ulting. For the entire match, he never stops unless he gets CC'd, which not enough people are running, so I've been having a pretty good time. This ultimate is not going to help with that if a person is playing the game correctly. If they're not supporting their male water and sun, then good job, you might be able to get something out of it. This character is not meant to counter male water and sun in my opinion, it's meant to counter the other teams that are running female Lionstone, female Selfos, and doing big burst damage, and then you try to catch the window and, and mitigate that and heal through it. It's okay for that, but if you're building the type of team that I'm talking about, you don't need that. You're going to CC the people anyway, the buffs aren't going to line up, it's not going to matter. So having this character on the team isn't helping you, and it's not providing enough either helping your male water and son or countering the enemy male water and son that I truly think that it's worth it anymore. I understand why people are using them in their old teams that are old, and they were very expensive to get. They still kind of work. People are not countering them enough. Why? Because they're not using enough area of effect crowd control. That's what you're really looking for these days, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to win, and I don't just mean for countering the male water and sun. Now I could go on to talk about blooms and galabars and all sorts of crazy stuff that's going to do a good job of helping you get through the situation. I don't feel like that's super necessary. I think that all you need to understand is that the importance, area of effect crowd control, anti-heal, and having healing on your own, own team is, is much higher than just having big damage on your team. Big damage is not good. It's not strong. It's not going to win you hard fights, especially when you're running a glass cannon team to be able to do it. And the other point that I want people to try to understand here is that when you're looking at these top level teams, you need to look at them in the context of when people spent their resources and made their team strong and how much they've spent and their sunk cost fallacy, which is oftentimes costing them wins. They've been using these characters so long that they don't want to recognize that the newer characters that are coming out are vastly overpowered compared to the older ones. Now, that doesn't mean that everything in the past two months is just strictly better than anything before it. That's not exactly what I'm saying, although it is sort of true to some degree, especially with Bjorn Kriegers and Akunas. Now, it is possible that I could go through an exhaustive list of every single thing and how to use it, but I think that covering the base concepts here is going to do the trick just fine, and this video is getting a little bit lengthy as it already is. But if anything that I've said here today has informed you to some degree, or given you some inspiration to try some new things, then by all means, toss me a subscription. I do have some goals in mind, and I'm trying to reach them, and you guys have been doing a good job of trying to help me hit that. For now, I want to thank you for watching. I have been Rage Panda one and I will see you in the next one.